An overnight bus ride put me in a small town right after dawn. I then took my sore body and tired mind to a charming little hotel. Fortunately, they had rooms available, so as usual, I cashed my bags in the room and headed out for a walk through the town I had been looking forward to seeing in a major destination for me, the ancient town of Hoi An. I was able to walk only a few blocks from my hotel to the old town. I had seen bits of Hoi An in film clips and in pictures on websites, but I wasn't sure what it would be like. Frankly, it surprised me. I walked down quiet narrow streets, blocked off to motorized traffic. The yellow morning sun shone brightly upon the cobblestone sidewalks as I looked around at tile roofs and carved balustrades. The buildings were of two primary designs. Old French colonial with masonry walls and multi-paned windows or Chinese with paneled wooden walls, small courtyards, and delicate woodwork. The old town ran along a riverfront to an amazing 16th century Japanese bridge. The old houses, the woodwork, the tile roofs, and the dragon-flanked gateways gave me the question. What century was this from? I felt as if I had just stepped into the pages of a novel by Pearl S. Buck. But I hurried on to my first stop. What Hoi An is famous for? Taylor's, of course. Not that one. I had done my research and brought some pictures of suits I wanted. I stopped at one tailor, dropped off a few ideas, then went to another tailor, and then another. I had saved up for this, and the suits averaged about $150 a piece. But I think I may have overspent a bit. Oh well, once a suit is cut, it's too late to ask for your money back. Hoi An, as we know it, came into prominence as an important center for shipping and commerce during the late 1500s. Merchants from China and Japan settled here, and ships from all over the Far East as well as Portugal and the Netherlands sailed up the river to unload their cargoes. By the 1700s, the Chinese merchants considered Hoi An the best trading spot in all of Southeast Asia. However, when Emperor Zalong gave the French exclusive trading rights to the nearby port of Da Nang, the bustling center of Hoi An quickly faded into a backwater. In fact, I wasn't the only one who noticed the time capsule aura that Hoi An's buildings and streets projected. I saw a film crew shooting scenes for well, a war film, naturally. But apparently the locals had seen this before and took it in stride. In a way though, the town's obscurity was a blessing because a great number of the buildings and streets were largely preserved and the old town retains much of its 18th century charm. That is, if you discount the souvenir shops, the tailors, the restaurants, and of course, the crowds of tourists.